War changed Wilson. He began to question what America was all about and how far we'd come since the early days. Those ruminations led him to create another Broadway smash, the musical 1776. Now, in this number, in which original cast member Hans Conried played the role of founding father John Adams, along with Benjamin Franklin and a chorus of liberals who are going to be right over here, the framers of the Constitution wrestled with one of the most difficult tasks facing our fledgling country. And this number was not intended to be performed by one person. <laughs> <clears throat> Bing, 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 bing. All right, gentlemen, let's get on with it. <laughs> Who among us will write our Declaration on Independence? <laughs> Mr. Adams, I say you should write it. To your legal mind and brilliance, I defer. Is that so? Well, if I'm the one to do it, they'll run their quill pens through it. I'm obnoxious and disliked. You know that, sir. Yes, I do. Then I say you should write it, Franklin. You, hell no. Yes, you, Dr. Franklin. You, but, you, but, you, but. <laughs> Mr. Adams, but, Mr. Adams. The things I write are merely light extemporanea. I won't put politics on paper, it's a mania. So I refuse to use a pen in Pennsylvania. <laughs> Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania, <laughs> refuse to use a pen. Bing, 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 bing. <laughs> Mr. Livingston, maybe you should write it. You are never controversial as it were. That is so. Whereas if I'm the one to do it, they'll run their quill pens through it. I'm obnoxious and disliked. You know that, sir. Yes, I know. Then I say you should write it, Livingston. You, good heavens, no. Yes, you, Roger Livingston. You, but, you, but, you, but. Mr. Adams, but, Mr. Adams, I cannot write with any style or proper etiquette. I do not know a participle from a predicate. I am just a common cobbler from Connecticut. <laughs> Connecticut, Connecticut, <laughs> a common <laughs> cobbler. Bing, 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 bing. <laughs> Mr. Sherman, maybe you should write it. You have many friends and you're a diplomat. Oh, the word, whereas if I'm the one to do it, they'll run their quill pens through it. He's obnoxious and disliked. Did you know that? I hadn't heard. Then I say you should write it, Sherman. Yes, you. Not me, Johnny. Yes, you, Roger Sherman. You, but you, but you, but. <laughs> Mr. Adams. But, Mr. Adams, <laughs> I've been presented with a new son by the noble stork. So I am going home to celebrate and pop the cork with all the Livingstons together back in old New York. New York! New York! Livingstons going to pop a cork! <laughs> Mr. Jefferson! <laughs> <laughs> This is Thomas Jefferson, romantic lead, high tenor part, exactly the kind of role I should never play. <laughs> Mr. Adams, leave me alone. Mr. Adams, I have not seen my wife these six weeks. Mr. Jefferson, you write ten times better than any man in Congress, including myself. For a man only 26 years old, you have a remarkable gift of expression and a felicity of composition. Now will you be a patriot or a lover? A lover? No! But I burn, Mr. A. So do I, Mr. J. You, him, John, who'd have thought it? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Jefferson, dear Mr. Jefferson, I'm only 41. I still have my virility. And I can run through Cupid's Grove with great agility. But life is more than sexual combustibility. Bustability! Bustability! Combustible! Quiet! <laughs> now you write it, Mr. A. Who will make me Mr. J? I. You? Yes. How? By, by physical force, if necessary. It's your duty. It's your duty, damn it. Mr. Adams, damn you, Mr. Adams. <laughs> You're obnoxious and disliked, that cannot be denied. 
Once again you stand between me and my lovely bride. Lovely bride! <laughs> oh, Mr. Adams, you are driving me to homicide! 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 We may see 